In this tutorial, we're going to edit a couple of landscape photos. You can see both of them on the right hand side in the browser. So first we tackle this one and then move on to this one. So let's go back to the first and I'll hide my browser so we have a bit more space. Okay, first of all, I can see that the horizon is not quite straight. So I'll grab the straighten cursor tool and draw along what I imagine to be roughly the horizon, which is around here and straighten like so. Next, I just want to modify the crop a little. So I choose the crop cursor tool and just change the crop like so. For editing, I can see it's a little bit on the dark side. So I'll increase the exposure just to change the overall brightness. And white balance wise, I'm gonna to prefer to warm it up a small amount like so. Now contrast wise, I can see it's looking a little bit flat. So in the levels tool, I'll just hit the auto adjustment button and that's gonna set my black and white points accordingly. So now the midtones are looking perhaps a little bit too bright overall. So I'll use the brightness slider and that's just gonna darken down my midtones somewhat. And I'll improve the contrast once again and just bump up the contrast slider. There we go. Now there's a few brighter areas of the photo that I'd like to just darken slightly. So I'll reduce the highlight slider and that will just give me a bit more detail back in the sky. It's only subtle, but if I preview it, I can just long press on highlight and I can see I've just got that little bit more detail back in the clouds. Now also just to make the image a bit punchier, I want to darken the very darkest tones. So I will use the black slider to darken those down a little bit. Now finally, in the Exposure Tool tab, I'll move down to Clarity and increase the value just to get a bit more mid-tone contrast. Now I think the only color edit I'm going to do uh, is gonna be on the blue sky. So let's move to the Color Tool tab here. And I'll use the Direct Color Editor. So that's this cursor tool down here. So if I want to darken the blue sky a little bit, all I need to do is click on an area of blue, hold my Alt key down and drag downwards and that's gonna reduce the lightness on those color tones. Now to finish my edit, I can just see one small distraction on the road so I can get rid of that with a heel layer. So over in the layers tool, I'll click and hold on the plus button and choose new heel layer. Let's give that a name and just call that road. I'll choose my brush cursor tool here and I need to pick a source point to copy from. So if I hold my Alt or Option key down and click once, I'll right click to make my brush a bit smaller and just mask here on the area that I want to get rid of. So if I hide the mask by pressing M, then you can see it's fixed that area quite nicely. So that completes that first edit. This is how it looked when it came out of camera and now how it looks with the few simple edits that we did. Okay, let's have a look at the second landscape photo. So first of all, this looks pretty straight, so we don't have to straighten as before, but I'll hit C on my keyboard to get the crop tool, and I'm just gonna change the crop slightly like so. Now this photo is a little challenging as it has quite a wide dynamic range, so there's some very deep shadow areas in the front and some brightness uh, towards the back of the photos. So let's see how we can deal with that. First of all, again, I feel the white balance could do with warming up a little, so I just increase my Kelvin slider, not by much, just to around there. Once again, I'll choose auto adjust on the levels and that's gonna set our shadow and highlight points. Overall, the exposure looks pretty good, but it could do with a bit more contrast. So let's increase that. And also the mid-tones, let's drop those down slightly as well. Also to improve the mid-tone contrast, I'll move down to clarity and increase the clarity slider. Okay, that's looking much better, but we have this very sort of dark area of trees at the front of the photo. Now, if I use the shadow slider to brighten those, it does so, but it also affects the rest of the photo, which I don't want. So let's reset that. And in this case, I'll create a luminosity mask that just masks the very darkest parts of the photo. So to begin in the layers tool, I'm gonna to create a new field layer. So this will mask the whole photo. So if I press M on my keyboard, we can see the mask that has been created. 
So now we're going to use the Luma Range tool to restrict that mask to the shadow areas. Now when you're creating a Luma Range mask, it can be easier to visualize if you select the grayscale mask, which you can do so by clicking here. So right now everything looks white because the whole photo is masked. Now as I said before, I want to restrict that just to the very shadow areas, so I'll click on Luma Range like so. So the shadow areas are at the end of the histogram, so I'm going to change the range down to zero here, and then slowly decrease the range until I reveal just the shadow areas. So those are the areas that are going to be masked white. So it just needs to be that tree line at the front, which is probably somewhere around there, like so. Now I want to refine that mask a little bit, so I can do so with the radius and sensitivity sliders. So right now radius is at zero, so the sensitivity slider isn't going to have any effect. So I'll increase my radius to just over halfway. And I'll increase the sensitivity so that it refines the masks and wraps around the fine edge of the trees a little better. So let's try that first of all. I can always go and refine it again if I need to. So I'll say apply, press M on my keyboard, just to get rid of the mask. And now I can use my shadow slider to increase the density in the front a little. So that looks perfect and it hasn't affected the rest of the photo. Let's also remember to name this layer in case I want to go back to it again. I'll call it tree line. Now I've just noticed on this layer that it's affecting an area that I don't want it to affect, just over here on the right hand side. So that's really easy to correct. I just grab my erase cursor tool, move over to this area and just erase this section of the mask, like so. There we go, I think I'm pretty satisfied with that edit. So as a reminder, here's how the photo looked when it came out of camera. And after a few simple but very powerful edits.